Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create um, basically an object from a single object. So in my classroom at Reedy, I have a bookshelf that we keep our sketchbooks on, which is this one right here. We call it the sketchbook shelf. So we're going to model this IKEA bookshelf um, in Maya, but the catch is, is that you're only going to get a single cube to do this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I have found online um, a much better picture of that IKEA bookshelf um, just to help me see it at a straighter, like straight on view. So what I am going to do is I'm going to bring this into Maya to help me kind of see and make sure that I am setting it up correctly. Um, it just helps you get into the practice of bringing in a photo of what you're trying to model so that you can model it and then go back later and tweak it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my grid kind of set up the way I want it so that Z is facing me, Y is up, X is to the right. Um, if you don't have that photo, uh, you can get that off my student learning hub or your teacher can give it to you if you are using this video. Um, I will make sure that I put in the comment section of the video on YouTube where you can get the file if you need it. So I'm going to go to my four views. Remember you could tap your spacebar or you can hit the four views on your keyboard. And I'm going to go to my front view um, because that picture is taken from the front. So I'm going to alt and then middle mouse button drag down so that I have basically this area of my grid to work with. So under view, I'm going to go to image plane and I'm going to bring in that picture of the clean bookshelf. I can do this one too, it doesn't matter. Um, I can use that to set up with, so either one works. I'm going to go ahead and use the messy one. And I'm going to drag it so that it's kind of sitting where I want it. Resize it a little bit so that I have a nice big picture. And as you can see, it's like I'm looking at it at an angle, so I'm going to go straight up when I'm modeling this. So looking up here in my perspective camera, I can actually see that uh, picture, which is slightly distracting. I only want to see it in this one view. Uh, so I'm going to go to my attribute editor, and with the image plane, plane selected, so if I've selected off of it, I'm going to click and drag till it turns green. I am going to scroll up until I see where it says image plane attributes looking through my front camera. That way I don't see it here. And that'll help me just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cube. So my interactive creation is on. And I'm going to click and drag here to kind of give me that bottom base. And as you can see I did it from that way so I'm going to drag this way to kind of give me good shape. So I, I need to make it just a little bit wider because this is a pretty hefty bookshelf. But I've got my shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and rename my object. Shelf. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down on the grid here in a second. I want to talk about some features that you've got in Maya. Um, so here under my channel box, if I go to inputs, I can actually change how many subdivisions an object has. And so that's what we're going to be using here in just a second. Okay, so move that out of the way. So I'm going to go over here and look at my inputs. So I've got to divide this up so that I've got basically different pieces of it that I can pull, stretch, and we call it extrude into multiple shapes. So I've got it here in Photoshop and I don't recommend having both of these softwares opened at once to kind of explain how I come up with the number of subdivisions that I need. So everywhere you see a division, so for example I'm going to pull a face up right here, I'm going to draw a line. So I've got a division here and then I need another line here for the separating part of the bookshelf and then so forth and so forth. So I take this for a second to show how I come up with the subdivision so that when you're in this situation you're not guessing. So I have one division here because that's my shelf and then I have a division here because this is going to be the hole that the book that the cubby sits in. So three I have a shelf, 
four, I have a hole at the cubby. Five, I have a shelf. Six, hole. Seven, a shelf. Eight, a hole. Nine, a shelf. So I need nine, nine subdivisions. Okay, so back in Maya, I am going to go here under my polycube inputs and I'm going to divide it into nine pieces. So for me, the width was how I divided it. Um, it could be the depth if you drew it differently. So don't panic if it's not exact. It's okay. I'm going to drag this down to my grid. So the last day when we did the primitive man, um, I told you guys that if it turned blue or blue with purple polka dots to um, call your teacher and don't like, don't panic, like I'll fix it. Well, today we're actually going to turn it that way on purpose. So these subdivisions, so this right here, this object is divided into many pieces. So this right here where these lines intersect, this is called a face. These lines are called an edge and where they meet is called a vertice. So we're actually going to play with some of these edges today to basically bend, squash, and stretch and pull our cube into that single shape of that IKEA bookshelf. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode. So to get there, I right click and hold on my keyboard, uh, on my mouse, sorry, and I'm going to go and choose edge. So it's turned light blue, and when I hover over an edge, the line turns red. So I'm going to double click to get the edge all the way around the object to go and move it. So looking at my picture, which I'm going to refer to quite often, we can see that this edge, like this section, this division, is somewhat thicker than some of the others coming up. So I want this line to be somewhat thicker than some of the others. Um, it's really important when you're moving that you don't just single click, because as you can see, I can move this piece and it looks like I've moved it, but I really and truly haven't. You've got to double click to get the whole line all the way across. So here I've got a shelf. Here I've got the cubby piece that the, um, the shelf sits on. I have a little shelf. So double click, kind of got the cubby piece. Now you probably just saw me do that. Don't drag your lines all the way over to the other side. You can actually pull your object inside out, so it's not a good thing. Now y'all can see I'm freehanding this, which is not a good thing. I should be doing it in this view so I can get these guys somewhat lined up. correctly. So I'm going to grab this one and drag it over here. Drag this one over here. So you can see freehanding your object is not necessarily oops, the best piece of advice. Uh, because I want to reshape this piece just a little bit, I'm going to grab that face and drag it in. And then the same thing with this side. So I'm going to get this edge, drag it where I want it to be, and then I'm going to get the face on this side to drag it to better match my bookshelf. So I can see I've got a pretty good representation of my bookshelf. I'm going to right click, go back into object mode. Okay, so what I was doing when I grabbed the face, I'm grabbing where the lines all intersect. So I was trying to grab the sides of the object to bring it in. For the ends, I can't grab the edges and move them. Um, I can only, I need to grab the face to actually change the size of the object. All the other subdivisions, grabbing the edges were just fine. Okay. Okay. So now that I have basically the basic shape of this, figured out, I'm going to go through and get the face mode. So I'm going to right click and hold and choose face. And working in my perspective view, I'm going to shift click all these little faces so that I have them all selected at once. Okay. Then I'm going to get my modeling tool kit. Okay, so I've got a lot of tools that are commonly used in the modeling. Um, you can go under um, mesh tools to find the modeling toolkit if it's not showing, but it is one of the tabs here on the side of your screen. So I'm going to choose extrude. So the extrude kind of acts a little funny because the tool has changed. I have my move tool, I have my scale tool, and I have my rotate tool all in one. So it's really important when you extrude 
that you immediately do something with the extrusion and that you don't let yourself kind of get distracted. All right, so I have that pulled up about where I want it to be. I'm going to extrude it again, but this time only just a little bit. The reason why is I need a vase right here that I can extrude this way to get the shelf that my bookshelf actually sits on. And I'm going to get this way so y'all can see just a little bit better. So then I'm going to extrude one more time. And I'm going to try to make sure it's roughly the same height. And then I'm going to extrude one more time. So as you can see, this is really starting to look like that shape. Like it's looking pretty close to our bookshelf. I do have to bring my extrusion across, so I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these and I'm going to extrude and drag this way. And I'm going to do that all the way over. If I click the wrong one, I'm just going to undo my shift button and reselect them. And then when I go back into my object mode, and I look in my channel box, whoops, I can see I only have the one object. I do still have my image plane, so I can go and look and see, and I did a pretty good job. I took it at a funny angle, but I do have it showing in there. It looks roughly the right size. By building it out of a single object, it's really easy for me to go through and scale and resize this. It also frees up a lot of memory space. So I can see I'm not happy with how thick it is, so I can resize it this way to get the shelf that I really hoped for. Okay, what would a bookshelf be without looking like an actual shelf? So I am going to click this little eye right here to bring up my hyper shade. I'm going to choose blend. Okay, so I'm going to double click on this guy. And this has gotten a little bigger. Let me resize this so y'all can see what I'm doing. So right here for color, I'm going to choose a color that makes me happy. I would like a dark green bookshelf. I'm going to select my bookshelf, and then right here with this, I'm going to apply material to selection. So I'm going to click this guy right here, and I'm going to call it my green bookshelf, oops, color. I'm going to close my hypershade so that now I have a pretty green object. Um, I can always hit my eye again. Let's pretend I don't like the green. I can hit my green here and I can go click here to change the color. So maybe I would like a blue one now. So I'm going to go pick a pretty blue. Oh, whoops, it did not change. There it goes. And now I have a blue bookshelf. Okay, so now you've made your shelf from a single object. So you can go back and kind of be proud and see, hey, you know what, I can do this. Oh, I can tell when I drag it, I needed to drag that face over just a tiny bit more. But now you can build things out of a single piece. So as we start the school object, um, assignment, start thinking about what you can build um, out of multiple pieces. Uh, for example, we're going to do a library. There's a lot of bookshelves in there, so I could do something similar to this in order to make a bookshelf. So on my Student Learning Hub, I do have a listing of a bunch of different objects. Uh, please pick some of those objects to go through and start modeling out um, different things, different objects. What can I squash and stretch and pull to make a cube into something else?